God's word is the light of life. It is powerful. It's the glory and food for our spirit. Open your heart and mind as you receive truth and inspiration of God's word that will change your life forever. As God's servant, Pastor Chooks Etty, the lead pastor of Doxa Life International Church, leads you into a life of limitless possibilities. As a family, you, you can't really maximize your life alone all by yourself. You can't really grow in isolation. Hallelujah. Who asks some people to sit down? Are they, do they have their own pastor there that they are listening to? <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, are you ready this morning? Come on, if you are ready, shout glory. Your life can never remain the same after today. Quickly turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 3. I don't know, we might, we might be on this subject for, for some months. <laughs> we, may, we may run it for more than one month. Because I, I, I began to realize how critical what we started studying yesterday in last week's Sunday is. I, I had to repent myself and then I made I took a decision. You're going to understand why. I took a decision that every morning part of my prayer you know it's not something you do once in a while that changes your life. It is what you do consistently. You know the problem is one of the reasons why we don't get the kind of result that we, we, we're supposed to get from God's word is that we do hit and run. We are not consistent. But I made up my mind beginning from this morning that I, I may make it like twice. Even though once in a while I just shout the word of God but I want to be more conscious and more deliberate and begin to Speak to myself. Begin to declare the things that God has said concerning me. I am unstoppable. I'm going somewhere to happen. My life is for the glory of God. I'm excellent. I'm excellent. I walk in divine health. They have not manufactured the person that will kill me. No weapon formed against me prospers. Now you're going to understand why. You see, we're going to be taking these things bit by bit. Now, you, there, are, there are people, their own problem is that they like speaking evil against themselves. And somebody will say, I don't speak evil against myself. And then you don't even speak the things that God has said concerning you. That's another, another error. But you're going to understand why. But that may not be what we're going to be doing today. Now let's read we, from verse 8. Oh, I think we, what, what was the caption we gave it last? Enjoying dogs are through your mouth. So part 2. Now give us King James. Give us King James. Wow. Verse 8. Can we, can we be faster, please? Okay. I read from my... Verse 8. Thank you. Okay. Now, for the, for the, for the sake of time, let's go to 9. Let's go quickly to 9. Let's go quickly. Okay. Let's read together. I want to go. Knowing that you have been called that you should inherit a blessing. Verse 10. How many of you love life? Just go back. Just leave it there. Give us the message translation. You want to see good days. 
Not just seeing days. Ooh. Whoever wants to embrace life and see the day feel of good. Yes, what you do. Say nothing evil or hurtful. You may be seated. <laughs> so it, it therefore means that you can you can actually have a life that is full of what? Come on, I want you to listen now. You can actually have a life that is full of what? Full of what? Full of good. And God is telling us how. Now, I would like you to understand something in, in God's kingdom. Pay attention now. Jesus speaking, he said, Behold, I give you the keys of what? Of the kingdom. He didn't say, I give you the key. He said, I give you the what? I give you what? I give you what? I want to hear you. I give you what? Okay, that means that it's, it's not just one key that you need to operate in the kingdom of God. You need how many what? How many what? Keys. And I want you to know that all these keys, they do what? They work together. Yeah? They work what? Together. I give you the principles. Now, let me tell you this. And one of the things about these keys that you need all of them to actualize your destiny. And another thing I also want you to realize is that none can take the place of the what? Are you following at all? Are you in this house? I said none can do what? Do you have a key? Do you have a key with you there? Huh? You have a key? Okay. Can you try to use that key to, to open this padlock here? It's a key, is it not? Eh? It's a key. So why don't you just say, it's key, it's key. Eh? It's key, key. No, key is not key. He said, I give you the keys of what? The kingdom. What do I mean? Now let me tell you this. Prayer is no substitute for planning. Prayer is one of the keys of the kingdom. But it cannot take the place of planning. One of God's servants said something. He said, spirituality is not a reason to suspend your brain. And another great servant of God also put it another way. He said, God gave you the brain. So you can give him rest. So God has given us several keys. Keys to use, to operate. So that we can maximize our destinies. And one of those keys that God has given to you is your mouth. And I remember last week I told you, your mouth was not primarily given to you to eat meat pie. Your mouth was not primarily, primarily given to you to drink juice. Your mouth was not primarily given to you to eat chicken. In fact, the truth is this. is one of the least functions of your mouth. But unfortunately, we major in the minor and minor in the major. And what do I mean? We major in using our mouth to eat chicken. That's what we major. That's one of the things we use our mouth to do. And then we add gossip to it. <laughs> Two of us. Eh? But can I tell you this? Your mouth was given to you to chart the course of your life. <laughs> and see, if you understand this, your life will be full of glory. Your life will be full of goodies. I'm going to be showing us several scriptures. If time permits us today. Now, I remember last week, I told us something that God instituted this principle 
And this same principle governs God. Do you realize that when God wanted to create things, he didn't say, bring me, bring me, bring clay, let me mold something. In fact, the truth of the matter, the real man that God created wasn't the one he molded from the clay. He only built a house for the man. The real man was the one he said, let us make man. And the Bible says, and God made man in his image. Then before he now formed and breathed, released man from himself into the clay. <laughs> so the real you is not your body. So God used mouth to create in Genesis chapter 1. He said, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. God began to call things into existence. And you know I realized something again. That God didn't just use words to create things. God is still using his word. God is still speaking to sustain the things that he has created. <laughs> God is not just, didn't just speak. He spoke and things came to be. And he's still speaking to sustain those things. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. He said he sustains all, how many things? All things. By what? The word of his power. That means God is still speaking. The day he stops speaking, the things he spoke into existence will crash. <laughs> Did you see that? He said by faith we see, give us the message. King James, okay. He talked about true faith. We understand that the words were framed by the word of God. That means he used word to do what? My friend, do you know you can use word to frame your own word? You use the word to frame. God used words to frame his own what? <laughs> now let me tell you why. He spoke and he's still using words to sustain those things. Now, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Give us Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Oh, mala brundos kita la bahaya. Ephesians 5 1, quickly, 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 quickly. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Now, a, one of the translations says, be ye therefore followers or be ye therefore imitators. Be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. Can you give us some other translations? He said, watch what God does. Then you do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. <laughs> you want to get the kind of result that God gets. And the kind of result that he got and he's still getting. God is saying, he said, watch what I do. And do the same. Then you have the same result. He said, be imitators of God. Now, it is not just being imitators of God when it comes to every other thing. You imitate him even in his mode of operation. And part of the mode of his operation is that he uses words to bring things into being. And then he uses words to sustain. Now, to sustain the things that he has brought into being. Or you put it in another way. He uses word to make life what he wants life to be. And not just that, he uses words to sustain them. But how many, Christ, many Christians are not operating like that? They use their mouth to eat chicken. And you are eating, you are, you are swelling up. And then, the, the other thing you use your mouth to do now is say, things are not working. I am managing. This is my sickness. Hi, he said, he said, I'm running mad, though. He said, no, the, 
things you see people would say with their mouth. Don't make me mad. Hey, you're angry. And then, <laughs> don't let me get mad at you. Okay, continue. <laughs> oh, you see, when you understand this, your language will change and your life will change. He said, you want to enjoy life and see good days. Refrain your tongue from speaking evil. Now we have seen that, we looked at that last week. That that is how God operates. And we have been encouraged to be imitators of God. Now we also saw something last week. That even salvation cannot take place without your mouth. It took your verbalizing your salvation for you to be saved. It doesn't matter how long you stay in church until you verbalize your, you know, you verbalize what you believe. You can't be saved. Romans chapter 10, 9 to 10 talked about something. He said, he said, with the heart, man does what? Believe it unto what? Righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. So you can believe in your heart until you confess it, you are not saved. And you remember what I said last week, that when God is talking about salvation here, is a, is a compound word. There are too many things inside it. Now hear this. Your faith is not confirmed until it is expressed. Your faith is not confirmed until it is declared. You see, you can believe in your heart that faith is when that thing that you believe finds expression through your what? Through your mouth. You see, we really know what you believe when you talk. You know, people can say, I believe, I believe. You pray for them, they say what? They tell you, I believe. Later they say, I believe, help my own belief. They say, this thing is not working. <laughs> So you know that thing that the person has expressed it through his mouth. You see, believing and faith, they are not the same thing. Until and unless your faith finds expression through your mouth in the place of confession and declaration and expressing what you believe, it is not faith. Is there in the Bible, I will show you when, when the time comes. He said, we having the same spirit of faith, we believe, therefore we speak. We having the same spirit of faith, we believe. And then not just that we believe, now what completes the circle of faith is that we believe and therefore we do what? We speak. Now, you see, I don't really care. I can be saying Declaring what I want to declare. And somebody by my side will be saying, this boy, ah, but we know him now. Why is he saying this thing he's saying? Or is he bragging? No, sir. I'm not, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to myself. And you know, one of the things that God told us to do, he said, speaking to yourself. Speaking to yourself. You see, there are levels of prayer. There are prayers you speak to God. And there are prayers you speak to yourself. And there are prayers you speak to the mountain. And you mustn't get them mixed up. When you need to speak to the mountain, don't be talking to God. Because God will not do anything about it. When you need to rebuke the devil, don't be saying, oh God, sokale, come and Come and rebuke the devil for me. God will say, okay, don't worry. He said, in fact, the power is not with me. Okay, you are wondering. He, the power is not with him. He brought, when Jesus brought the power, he gave it to us. 
So which one is with him now? So when he's giving you the power to resist the devil and then you are telling him to do it for you, you God will not do for you what he has given you the capacity to do. You know, Kenneth Hagin had this experience. It, it was more like a vision. You know, Jesus, it, 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 Jesus was speaking to him. Jesus was communicating something to him. And then the devil was making noise. And why the devil was making noise, it was interfering with what Jesus was telling him. So he wasn't getting what Jesus was saying. And then he was waiting for Jesus because Jesus too was seeing the devil. So in his mind, he thought that it, it was Jesus' responsibility to rebuke the devil for him. So to his shock, Jesus kept talking. But he wasn't hearing because the devil was making noise. He, he got tired of waiting for Jesus to do something. He now rebuked the devil. Out! The devil disappeared. Now he asked Jesus, how come you were not, you saw the devil and the devil was interrupting what you were saying and you didn't do anything about it? And Jesus told him, he said, if you hadn't done something about it, I wouldn't have done anything about it either. Because I had already given you the authority to handle the devil. So you don't need to wait for me. Some of you, why the devil is dealing with you because you have been waiting for God. Keep waiting. But today you are waking up. <laughs> I said, today you are what? You are waking up. No, he had already given you, so deal with the devil. Now, we talk about the issue of the mouth. Now, last week, if you remember, I, I said, we read one scripture. He said that for every I do word, they will come to wait for you. Where? On the day of judgment. And I told you the day of judgment there has really, it's not really about, it's more than just, the day that Jesus will sit to judge people. The things that you are saying now, you are programming your future. Whether good or what? Whether good or what? Whether good or bad, you are programming your future. And those things are there waiting for you. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, it, it, was, it was, we were not able to record the message. And then, we also said something last week that you must understand in the spirit realm in the spirit realm it is governed or ruled by the word. In the spirit realm things are not really done by hand. You see, these are most of these principles you see the devil duplicate them. That's why you see most times you see even native doctors, what do they do? What do they do? What do they do? Because they understand that in the spirit realm, okay, maybe a native doctor says, I'm going to kill you. You think they, they will come with their hand to come and kill you? They begin to speak something because they understand that in the spirit realm, it is words that rules. It is words that shape people's destiny and people's future. Now, I remember I told you last week that in the spirit realm, they don't understand the difference between joke and when you are not joking. I read that scripture for us that you make a vow. You don't say, say the angel, it was a mistake. They don't hear it was a mistake. So that even in, when you are joking, you don't say the wrong things because they don't know the difference between joke and real words. Every word that proceeds from you because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what? Speaks. So there is no difference. James chapter 3. James chapter 3. James chapter 3. We read from verse 1. <laughs> I like it. Now, he said, My brethren, be not many teachers, knowing that we shall receive greater condemnations. Okay, verse 2. 
He said, for in many things we offend all. I'm going to read. It's going to be a, a lengthy. He said, if any man offend not in what? If any man offend not where? Did he say in doing? In, in offend in what? The same is who? Hey. Oh my God. If anyone offend not in words, the same is who? A perfect man. And not just that. And the person, and able also to bridle the whole what? I told you that your mouth, your tongue was given to you to chart the course of your life. You can use your mouth to determine the direction of your life. The direction of your what? Your body. The direction of your destiny. Now he said, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn, turn about their whole body. Now one of the ways they use in controlling the horse, you know, the horse is, can be very stubborn. Very stubborn. You now, one of the things before they can use a horse for any game or for anything, they break the horse. They call it breaking the horse. And until you break a horse, your life is in danger. Until you come to a point where you, you break the horse so that it can comply with you, the horse can throw you off and once it jams you with the feet, that can be straight to mortuary. If the horse steps on you by the reason of the muscles, you are gone. So for you to use the horse, you need to break it. And that's why people will tell you, until you break yourself like they break the horse, your life is in danger. You come to a point where you can control your life. Because for you to be able to control the horse, you need to break it. And then he started telling you the things they do. That one of the ways they control the horse is where the what? The, where the what? He's telling you something very critical. He said, behold. You are running ahead of me, sir. Thank you. Can you go back to three? That they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Verse 4. Verse 4. Now he said, Behold, also the sheep, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small hem. Wheresoever the, the governor listed. Now he's telling you, I told you about the rudder. Give us verse 5. That the sheep, as big as the sheep is. This King James seems a bit different. Is this a new King James? No, that thing is not King James you're giving me. Let me, let me check my own King James. James chapter 3. Okay, now. Okay, take it. Go back a little bit. Okay, now he's telling you something about the sheep as big as the sheep is. He said they are torn by a very small what? Road ruder. Wherever the pilot desires. Now move ahead. Now he's trying to tell you something about your tongue. Even so the tongue is a little member 
and boasts great things. See how great a forest, a little fire kindles. And he said, and the tongue is what? A word of what? The tongue is so set among our members that it defies the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire by hell. <laughs> I like the message translation. Can you give us the message translation? We read verse 4 and 5. You know, I told you I, I like us reading some of these things. The, okay, the message translation 4 and 5. Okay, can we read it together? One to go. No, I wanted to read it again. Do, do you, are you seeing something there? Now, there are two things. The ruder must be in the hand of a skillful what? <laughs> Can I tell somebody, you are the captain of your life. Your, your destiny is not just in the hand of God. Your destiny is in your hand. And I'm giving you, I'm training you now, giving you the skill because it takes a skillful captain to move the ship, the huge ship, in the direction that the ship is supposed to go. Now, oftentimes you think that your destiny is in the hand of your pastor. Your destiny is in the hand of your uncle. You say, if my uncle had sent me to school. If my uncle has... <laughs> and then you, 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 are, you hate your uncle so much. But God is telling you that you are the captain of your what? Of your ship. And this ship is your life. Your life is huge. But you can use your tongue to move it. Now, verse 5. Oh, here, see. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account. But it can, it can accomplish nearly anything. Or destroy it. He said the mouth. That's what I told you last week. I said words are not cheap. Words are expensive. And if you know how, word, how expensive words are. You will not use your mouth carelessly. You will not just say thing, anything. I don't die you. Or you look at your children and say big head. Big goo for nothing. Coconut head. Dummy, you are prophesying and speaking death into your children. They annoy you, you say anything. And you are even, you are priding in your foolishness. You say, this is my mouth, eh? If I open it, eh? You are, you are glorying in stupidity. This is my mouth. If, when I, if I finish with you, you won't even know the way to the house. Have some people ever spoken to you before that you didn't remember the address of your house? They, they tell you something like this, eh? you remember the day you were born, even though you were not there, you didn't know. Please, leave it in, leave it in that place. Let's, oh, I, I, I like to read that place again. You see, one of the things, a time will come when we will begin to talk about the, when, when you need to prophesy and how you need to prophesy the things. We may not do that today, but I want to establish something in your heart that you determine the direction that your life is going to go by your mouth. You see, anybody can curse you and you know the scripture says, curse, curseless, curseless shall not what? Shall not stand. 
So I'm not really bothered about what somebody is telling me. I'm more concerned about what I'm telling myself. You see, because the truth is that the, God has made you the greatest prophet over your life. Hey, can I tell you this? Even if you didn't meet any prophet to prophesy over your life, and you sit down and you are prophesying to yourself, declaring the word of God over you, there's no way you won't become something. I'm telling you the truth. Did you see that? He said, a word out of whose mouth? Out of whose mouth? Is it your pastor's mouth? Is it your neighbor's mouth? Out of your own mouth? He said, it may seem as if it doesn't have any consequence. It may seem as if it doesn't have any effect. It may seem as if it doesn't have any meaning. Hey. But he said, but it can accomplish nearly anything. You remember, we read something that, that looks like this from the mouth of Jesus. It can accomplish. Oh, this skill that God is giving to us, do you know if you realize it, you will not have a bad day. You see, one of the reasons why people are depressed is because people think and speak evil of themselves. The devil will, will tell you, say, see you. How old are you? He said, 40. He said, what, what have you achieved? 40, you are still living, you are still paying rent. He said, it's true. He said, a fool as 40 is a fool forever. He said, ah, it's true. You are, you are agreeing with the devil. He said, see you. He said, where is your car? He said, I don't have. But do you know that John bought car when he was 20 something? And look at you, you are 40. You don't have. Do you think there is, there is no hope for you? He said, it's true. Then you use your mouth and be expressing and verbalizing things. And then, you know what you do? Because when you speak negative things, you actually empower the devil to destroy you with those words. When you speak, you speak the word of God. You see, there are people that they are, your angel has nothing to do because he's not being sent on any errand. Because the things that you are saying, you are only empowering demons to afflict you. You are empowering demons to afflict your children. You say all manner of negative things against your child. Then by the time that child begins to misbehave, you now say, oh, all my enemies have come after me. You are the enemy of yourself. Maybe the child does one thing, you say, you prostitute, you call, you, hey. I've told you before, you can cane, and yet you are prophesying as you are caning. What? I like that, that's, that's the realm I used to operate in. And as I'm caning, I say, your head must be correct. <laughs> you must fulfill destiny. Why? Even slap, boom. You fulfill destiny. <laughs> no, then, because I know how powerful words are. Oh, you know what the Bible says? Where the word of a king is, there is what? Power. And the Bible says in Revelation, I'm going to give us a scripture, I think one verse six. He said, he has made us kings and priests unto our God. And the Bible says, where my word is, there is power. So I can't use it carelessly. I can't use it carelessly. I can't use it carelessly. Now let me tell you how powerful words are. You know the late Archbishop. I heard this story and oh my God. The late Archbishop, 
went to River State. There was, there was a man of God in that city. In fact, when I was growing up, when people didn't know what television ministry was, this man was pulling, if you, know, if you see the kind of crowd that he was pulling, and if you see the kind of the, the television ministry that he, he had, then Archbishop came to Port Harcourt and was doing something, and the man started opposing him. You know, was trying to rebel and, you know, try to rub shoulders with him. Made some nasty, nasty comments. And then why he said that in, Archbishop said something, what's the name of his church? I won't call the name of the minister, but maybe I'll call the church. Some of you may not even know because the church... That was, that was in the 80s, 90s. It was booming. It, in fact, he was like the principality in Port Harcourt. They said, they called the name of the church. He said, El Shaddai. You know what the archbishop said? He said, from now it shall die. That was pronouncement from his mouth. They called the name, he said, El Shaddai. And he said, from this moment it shall die. Do you know from that moment, as I speak, that man has no address. In fact, when I saw him in Makodi, one time he came to Makodi, he was a shadow of himself. That is, that is how powerful words are. And the truth is this, and I want you to know this. You know, most times you see a whole lot of pastors bragging about cursing people. God didn't give your mouth to curse. God gave you your mouth to bless. There are times you see pastors want to manipulate. He say, if you leave this church, you will die. That is, you are, you are abusing your mouth. You are abusing, you are, you are abusing the power that God has given to you. He said, that, you see, when you read down the, the place, when you read down this James, he said, look, your, from your mouth, it's not supposed to be Proceeding, cursing, and blessing. Now, I told you that story to tell you, show you the power of words. Especially when I said, where in the, the word of a king, there is what? There is what? Power. And when you understand that, you're going to use your mouth to project your life in the direction that you want it to go. Now, let me show you something. Ephesians chapter 4. Okay. Verse 20, no, verse 29, we read King James and we read message translation. Now, 29, please, if you can, all right. Now, he said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your way. Out of where? But that which is good to the use of what? A defiant. That it might minister what? Yes. To who? Yes. Unto the hearers. Now let me tell you this. When you say things, who is the first hearer? <laughs> oh. Your language will change. Somebody didn't say me. One of the things is that your language will change. And your life will change. Now, okay. There's something you will, no, no. Go back there. Okay. Okay. Before we read, go to read the message translation. There's something you discover about words. He's telling you, Uncle. Okay. <laughs> Sir. You're going. Okay, just leave it there now. He said. One of the things you, you see about your mouth is that one, your mouth or the words from your mouth has the capacity to build. 
That's what they are talking about. A defying. A defying is from edifice. It has the capacity. You see, some of you, you use your mouth. Rather than using your mouth to build yourself, you use your mouth to tear yourself down. And not just that, you use your mouth to tear others what? Down. When you finish with them, they forget their names. They, they don't even remember that they have any ability at all. Words are powerful. And another thing about words is that words can minister grace. Do you know what grace is? Grace is not just divine favor. You know, normally when you say, when you ask people to define grace, they say divine favor, merited favor. No. Grace is dif divine empowerment. So, it's telling you something that words have the capacity to empower. It has the capacity to infuse strength. Oh, try this for a moment. Now, can, let's try this for a moment. Say this. Can you, now, begin to say some things. I am the wisdom of God. I, 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 I'm, no, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. My life is for the glory of God. Now, begin to speak some things that you can remember the, the word of God has said concerning you. I'm the head and not the tail. Say it. Say it in a moment. And say it a minute. And I'll tell you something. You're going to say it a minute. Speak to yourself. Speak to yourself. If you genuinely do this thing, you are going to understand something. And then say it. Say it. Just keep speaking the things you can remember. I'm the head and not the tail. Oh, my God. Now, pause. Pause, pause, pause. How do you feel? How were you feeling as you were saying those things? Eh? You, you, are, you are feeling that you can remove the devil's head. You are, as you are saying those things, you are not seeing limitations. As you are saying those things, there is, like, there is strength welling up on your inside. In fact, at times, when you begin to say those things, you begin to see the anointing surge from your head. There is something about words. It gives grace. It empowers. And you are the first recipient of the empowerment of the words from your mouth. Now, we're not going to try it. Because... I'm not going to ask you to do something that will destroy your life. But you know, the days and the period you were speaking negative things about yourself, how did you feel? Did you feel you can? At times you didn't even feel like leaving your house. At times you didn't even feel that there was anything good in you. You didn't even, if at all the energy in you, it was as if they were sad. Why are you doing that to yourself? You know, so, you know, some of us, we think that the more your head is like this, the more God will have pity on you and do something for you. You know, like, see, let me tell you this. God does not walk by pity. God walks by principles. Don't think it's the volume of your tears that will attract God to intervene in your life. <laughs> you stay like this, eh? You, you are looking for pity party. You, you have been trying to attend parties. Nobody's inviting you. Then you organize one for yourself. Pity party. He said, nobody likes me. There is nothing that I do that I used to go. Oh, I have near success syndrome. You. The devil say it's true. Didn't you see the other day? As you went to buy fuel, when it got to your turn. Who, ha who has it not happened to before in life? Why would you believe stupid things? He said, the other day I went to buy bread. When he got to my town, they said, bread has finished. And so what? You go to another shop and buy and go home. Why are you making a doctrine out of it? Go to another shop. Has the shop finished? Go to another shop, buy it. And don't now say, oh... Near source, I have near source syndrome. Mm -hmm. Then you, you agree, you.
you. Do you know who you are? Do you know whose you are? Things are working for me. Hi, 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 hi. All things are working together for good. My life is working. I'm working. Things are working for me. It, it, see, it doesn't matter what the devil throws at me. It is working for my good. I'm going somewhere to happen. Now, let, let me tell you this. Uh, if you really know who I am, you will make sure you have my number now. I have your own now because I know where you're going somewhere. <laughs> you will ask me to, to meet your PA. Yeah. <laughs> can, can I tell you something? You see, if God really opens your eyes to see who your neighbor is, Oh, no wonder the Bible says we do not walk by sight. You see, that's why you can't be saying what the things you are going through. Say the things you want to say. Say the things that God has said concerning you. Because life is, the spirit is more real than the physical. You need to know that. You need to know that. Second Corinthians chapter, four, chapter 3 talked about, he said, we do not walk by sight. So, you can't, I can't be because I don't have money in my pocket or because I don't have money in my account, I'll say I'm poor. I'm not poor. Oh, I'm rich. How can you call yourself poor? Jesus became poor that you might be rich. So, why are you still calling yourself poor? Because you are looking at the wrong thing. You are looking at the wrong thing. No wonder Apostle Paul said, open their eyes, that their eyes of understanding might be enlightened. Why are you measuring yourself by because you have one suit or because you have one shirt? Then you say, oh, when you look at it, you say, child, I'm, I, I don't suffer. In fact, my suffering is more than Job's own. You, come on, my friend. Now, let me tell you this. When you understand the word of God, and the power of God and the plans of God for your life, you will not have a blue day. You, you will not be awake counting ceiling because you are going through something. Oh my God, I sleep like a baby, I'm telling you. The, the problem that will make me keep awake and be worrying has not been born. Because you see, anything, because the Bible says, God will not allow what I cannot handle to come to me. So anything that comes to me is because I can handle it. I tell you the truth. There is no problem today, tomorrow that I cannot handle. That's one of the things you should tell yourself. Because he said, you see, every problem passes through, what did they used to call it? The process uh, in production yeah? No. The sun people, you know, trying to make sure that it meets standard. Okay? Quality control. Quality control. Can I tell you? God has, God, there's no problem that comes to your life that doesn't pass through the quality control of God. I'm telling you. <laughs> The devil said, let me go. He said, come first. Let me see. Let me see, see what he can, what you want to, what you want to give him. In fact, because, you see, oh my God. Do you know oftentimes that some of the challenges that you are going through is because God is boasting about you. You see, Job didn't understand that. Job's eyes was not on, the devil was walking on his own, jail, jail, and God said, come here. <laughs> devil did not have Job in his agenda. He was going to and fro. God, where are you coming? He said, from going to and fro. So those of you, when the people ask you, where are you coming? He said, I'm going to and fro. Don't do the ministry of the devil. <laughs> he, said, he said, have you considered my servant Job? He said, there is none like him. Do, do, do you realize, if Job had had that conversation, 
He wouldn't have caused the day he was born. I can handle it. Don't use your mouth and say, you have a challenge. Say, I'm confused. Oh. I'm confused. I don't even know what to do. I know what to do. Even though you don't know it now, but you see, you know what to do. It is given to them, to you to know, to know, to know, to know, to know. You have the Holy Ghost in you who is the helper. With the Holy Ghost, I can't fail. With the Holy Ghost, I am unstoppable. It doesn't matter the, the policies, I am unstoppable. Your language have to change you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This one, you just stay and be cursing Buhari and say, look at what Buhari has done to me. Buhari, he has no power over my destiny. My destiny is in my tongue. I use it to chart the course of my life. Now, let me read, let me read something as we close. Let me just read something. We're going to continue. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I, I just saw a scripture. You know, that's how God operates. He said, God calls those things that be not. Oh, my God. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. That's how God brings things into pass. Can you, can you show us that scripture? Before I read the last scripture as we close. He said, God calls those things as it is written. I have made you a father of many nations. Before whom, God, before whom he believed. Even God who quickened the dead. And called those things. Which be not as though they were. Give us the message translation. He calls them. You, do you know you are calling for things? When you are talking with your mouth. But the question is this. What are you calling for? Is it death or is it life? What are you calling for? What are you calling for? Oh my God. He said that Abraham was first named father. You see, that's one of the reasons... Before God could change Abraham's life, he changed his name. Because, you see, that's one of the reasons. Because they ask him, he goes somewhere, they ask him, what's your name? He said, Abraham. That is assumed father. And God is saying, I'm making you a father of many nations. And God said, look, for this thing to work, I have to change his confession. He changed his name. So, when they now ask him, what is your name? He's not saying assume father. He said father of many nations. And the people were mocking him. See him. He doesn't even have a child. And he's saying he's a father of many nations. Oh, just like when you be saying I'm rich. They see, see him. He's trekking. And he's busy making mouth. They don't understand. They don't understand that the things that we see were made out of the things that are not seen. And that is how God operates. He said that we should be followers of him. Imitators of your father. Who caused those things that be not as though they were. Not as if they were. As though they were. He's calling them reality. Oh, truth is more real than anything. That cancer you are seeing is not real. The truth of God's word is real. That by his stripes you were healed. He took your infirmities. He said Abraham was first called father. Then he became. He was first called. Then he became. Did you see the procedure? He dared to trust God. Raise the dead to life with a word making something out of with what? With what? Word. With word. Oh, they say sin is believing. But in our kingdom, believing is seeing. In our kingdom, it is believing before you see. <laughs> You remember what happens to Thomas? He said, until I see, I will not believe. Jesus told him, blessed are those 
who didn't see yet they believe. Blessed is that man who is not seeing money in his pocket yet he believes he is rich. Blessed is that person even though his circumstance is speaking contrary. He's seeing himself as he's going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Oh, so today what are you going to use your mouth to call forth? You see, when you are saying those negative things, you are empowering demons. Depression comes. But when you begin to say the things that God says, what is happening to you? Grace. Now, let me tell you this. That's one of the ways to break habits. Maybe in the fullness of time, I'll, I'll be more clear. I'll, you see, there was a, a habit I broke. One of the ways I broke that habit was sometimes I would see myself inside. I said, no, this, this is not who I am. Sin shall not have dominion over me. I, I spoke myself out. It's not that you, you fall, you say, oh, oh, I can't help myself. This is who, no, sir. I, sin shall not have dominion over me. I am out of this thing. I spoke myself out of it. You see, because when you begin to agree with that habit that that's who you are, you are disempowering yourself. You remember what we read? He said that when you speak, you are either ministering grace. You are either empowering or disempowering yourself. The choice is yours. Can you see how simple success is? It's so simple. You see, that's why so many people miss it. Because the things of God are so simple. Religion makes it complicated. Oh, can we see something in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28? Message translation. The, the things of God are very simple. You see, that's why many people have not saved. You mean I just come and declare I'm saved. All the one million people I killed are forgiven. Yes. Too good to be true. Oh, God uses the foolish things of this world. How foolish this thing is looking in the eyes of the world. But let me tell you this. It is the foolish things that God uses. I said message, 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 message. He said, are you tired and worn out? Born out on religion. Born out on religion. Religion will tire you. He said, come to me. Get away with me. You will recover your life. I will show you how to take real rest. Go ahead. Walk with me. Walk with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced readings of grace. I wouldn't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. He said, walk with me. See how I do it. And he's telling you how he does it. He speaks. It's very simple. Bow down your heads. Can you begin to speak? He said, speaking to yourself. This message was brought to you by Doxa Life Media. To enjoy more of the glory life, which is the God kind of life, join us at Doxa Life International Church, House of Mercy Auditorium, Uniagri Road, North Bank, Makodi, Benue State, on Wednesdays by 5 p.m. and on Sundays by 8 a.m. For more inquiries, you can reach us with the following numbers, 081-180-433-32 or 081 081- 487-92013 or send a mail to us at doxalifechurch at gmail.com Visit our Facebook page Doxalife International Church God bless you